כן, טלי, אנחנו מביאים הערב מוושינגטון רעיון ראשון עם ראש צוות המשא ומתן האמריקני לשיחות עם איראן. ונדי שרמן משיבה באריכות לכל החששות שקיימים בישראל, וגיל תמרי שליחנו בוושינגטון, העיתוי של הרעיון הזה הוא לא מקרי. לגמרי לא, אם בחודש שעבר, תמר, אנחנו דיברנו על מתקפת החיוכים של הנשיא רוחני, מה שאנחנו רואים ברעיון שנותנת לך ונדי שרמן, מתקפת חיוכים של ממשל אובמה כלפי הציבור בישראל. האמריקנים חשים, ובצדק, שהם איבדו את הסיפור, את הציבור הישראלי בסיפור הזה, ולכן חשוב להם מאוד מאוד לחבק אותנו, וגם לדבר אל הציבור הישראלי מעל לראשו של ראש הממשלה, אבל הם עושים את זה בשיטה מאוד מאוד מתוחכמת. הם מחבקים את נתניהו ומנסים להסתיר את חילוקי הדעות, אבל חילוקי הדעות בין ראש הממשלה נתניהו לבין הגברת שרמן, לבין הבוס של הקרי והבוס השני של האובמה, הם קשים, קשים ביותר. אז זה ההקשר של הרעיון, והנה הכותרות של הרעיון שערכתי בסוף השבוע עם הממונה על המשא ומתן עם איראן ונדי. Sherman. Under Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. You are heading to Geneva this week to the second round of talks with Iran, and I would like to start by asking, do you trust President Ohani and his intentions? Do you trust the positive intentions of the Iranian regime? We do not approach this on the basis of trust because we know there's a great deal of mistrust on both sides. Uh, we approach these negotiations to try to deal with Iran's nuclear program and President Obama's commitment that Iran not obtain a nuclear weapon. What's interesting is that when it comes to the Palestinian issue, the Israeli public is divided. But regarding to Iran, the vast majority backs Prime Minister Netanyahu's approach. In the last poll that we conducted in Channel 10, 80 percent of Israelis said that they do not believe President Ohani and they back Netanyahu's approach. What do you have to say? in this regard to the Israeli public, to the Israeli concerned public? Uh, what we are discussing in the P5 plus one is a first step that would put time on the clock, that would stop the nuclear program from advancing, so we have time to negotiate a comprehensive agreement to address all of the issues of concern in their program, their facilities, their capacity, their stockpiles, uh, monitoring, verification. It's very complicated and it will take some time. So we want to make sure that the program doesn't continue to go move forward while we're doing that negotiation. Uh, and whatever agreement we reach, uh, Israel will know about, understand, have consulted with us on, uh, because Israel's security uh, is bedrock uh, and there is no closer security relationship than what we have with each other. You talk about a cautious process, and yet there are ministers in the Israeli government that are very close to Prime Minister Netanyahu, that are comparing the negotiations that you are leading to the infamous Munich Agreement. So is the year 1938 and the administration is Chamberlain's government as they imply? I obviously don't believe that. We haven't agreed to anything yet. We haven't offered any sanctions relief. We haven't lifted any of sanctions, so nothing has occurred yet. Uh, and I think that anything that we do in a first step, uh, if we can in fact stop uh, the program from advancing further while we negotiate a comprehensive agreement and offer very limited, temporary, reversible sanctions relief, uh, but keep in place the fundamental architecture of the oil and banking sanctions, which we will need for a comprehensive agreement, not for a first step, uh, then I think we are starting to make progress. No deal is better than a bad deal. Uh, and that is uh, the uh, inst set of instructions I've been given. And indeed, you heard Prime Minister Netanyahu in the UN stating very, very clear that Israel won't hesitate to stand alone against Iran. How do you understand this comment? Well, as I said, uh, the Prime Minister uh, will say whatever he believes is important uh, as the Prime Minister of Israel. We, of course, believe, and I know the Prime Minister believes, uh, that the best answer here is a peaceful, negotiated solution. Uh, Israel knows as well as any country, if not better than any country, the cost of war, uh, the cost of military action. A question regarding the red lines of the U.S. in these talks. Is the United States demanding that even the enrichment of 3.5% of uranium will be stopped? And as part of an agreement, will Iran um, be allowed to activate its heavy water reactor in Iraq? Well, we are very concerned about all of Iran's programs, all of its facilities, Fordo, Natanz, Iraq, all of them. 
We are concerned about all of the levels of enrichment. We are concerned about the stockpiles, capacity, uh, R&D, every element. Now, you've probably noticed I haven't discussed the details of, mm, the, of the enrichment. <laughs> and I'm not going to discuss the details because this is, I think, for the first time, a serious and substantive negotiation. And we have to test it. We have tried very carefully to keep the details inside the negotiation. And interestingly, Iran has done so as well. And I think that speaks to the seriousness of the negotiation. Iran has now in deployment more than a dozen thousand of centrifuges. And it seems that it will retain at least part of its enrichment abilities. So does it mean that even if the negotiations will succeed, Iran will remain a nuclear weapon threshold state? Nothing has been agreed. Uh, so anyone who makes assumptions about what will remain, what won't remain, we haven't gotten there yet. But will the U.S. agree to a situation in which Iran stays a threshold state? We must address all of our concerns about Iran's nuclear program and assure ourselves that Iran will not be able to have a nuclear weapon. You said earlier that Israel will be updated about, upon every, um, every new step that will be taken. But if eventually an agreement will be achieved and Israel will oppose the framework, would that alone prevent the U.S. from signing such an agreement? I think you're offering me a hypothetical which is way down the line. The United States and Israel share the same objective, that Iran not have a nuclear weapon. Uh, we keep that foremost in our minds every single day, and that's what we aim to do. An Iranian newspaper reported this week that in the near future, Iran will disclose um, new information about the missing Israeli soldier, Ron Arad. Can you confirm this report? I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I think that for all of us, uh, whenever we have missing people uh, or people who are held in ways that we do not want, we have three Americans of great concern to us uh, in Iran. Uh, and that we talk about all of the time and try to uh, get home to their families. Uh, we all uh, always want our loved ones home with us. Uh, and I know that uh, my colleagues, if they ever have such information, uh, will share it. So, but is it part of the issues that are discussed in other conversation in, in Geneva? In Geneva, the sole focus is on the nuclear issue. Uh, and indeed, um, there are many other concerns that we have with Iran. Obviously, uh, the conflict in Syria is one of them, uh, where we think whether it's Lebanese Hezbollah financed by Iran or IRGC Quds Force engagement in, Iran, in Syria. Uh, this is not uh, helpful. Uh, in fact, it's quite destructive. You mentioned Syria. An official in the White House has confirmed to CNN that Israel is behind the strike in Syria this week. Um, obviously, in Israel, there's a lot of anger and disappointment because of this leak. Can you explain why these leaks are happening? Because it's not the first time, and there are people in Israel that think this might be intentional. I have no idea. Uh, we have leaks about American policy in the American press as well, uh, which we don't want. Uh, I don't know where it comes from. Uh, and all of these kinds of leaks uh, are most unfortunate. Yes. and not helpful. Speaking of leaks, the U.S. is uh, facing a diplomatic crisis with its close ally Germany following um, the information that it has monitored the cellular phone of Chancellor Angela Merkel. Um, is the U.S. spying on Israeli political figures as well? I think what makes most sense for the purposes of your audience, uh, which uh, certainly understands spying and intelligence. Israel has vaunted capabilities in terms of intelligence, which we all are very grateful for because we all rely on the superb uh, intelligence community that Israel has to offer the world. We will all have to talk about these things together because we all face these challenges together. How in a world of the internet, uh, telecommunications, enormous capabilities, we make sure that there are not excesses, uh, that we respect each other, that we respect the partnership and friendship and relationships uh, that we have. Mm -hmm. So we look forward to working together on this issue. So you're not denying and not confirming? Well, I don't, I don't think it's really appropriate for me in this setting. I think what's important uh, is what the President of the United States has said, and that is he's undertaking a review 
He wants to make sure that everything we're doing is appropriate. Uh, I'm sure we will be consulting with Israel, a very strong intelligence partner with the United States, in, in how we are going forward. Mm -hmm. Undersecretary Wendy Sherman, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you. Thanks very much.